I always get cans for the journey. It's nicer that way. On the bus with a drink, looking at my phone. I've been working all day, so I felt tired and ancient. And then in the queue, I was giving some change to that street drinker who's always outside. Feeling bad I didn't have more, but lucky I had anything really. No one paid with cash even then. When this absolute joker started putting glitter on my face and I hate glitter, it's a nightmare. And I knew I'd probably still be sparkling for the next week at work, but honestly, I couldn't be bothered to resist. And well, they were having a good time, so I just went with it and got glitter faced. And then it was all, in you go sparkles, have a good night, love. Going into that darkness always felt like easing myself into some enormous shared bar like they have in steam rooms in Japan. And it was steamy. This fog hit my face, all body odor and beer, and I liked it. I always liked it. I saw myself in that mirror by the bar and I remember I was grinning, like I already knew what was gonna happen. I didn't, I'm not some psychic weirdo, but I had a good feeling, you know? I always got a good feeling going there. It was busy, so I couldn't see my mates, and as I looked round for them, I saw you for the first time. You shone, really. Well, it was the fluorescent light from the open toilet door behind you, but it glowed like this gold aura. <laughs> really, I'm sounding weird now, aren't I? I don't actually believe in auras, but you were glowing like a saint in double denim with a plastic pint glass. I saw my mates flinging themselves about on the dance floor and as I moved to them, the heat intensified, but we still danced. You had to dance. Ray and Lex were under this purple spinning light thing, which made them come in and out of focus. They looked stupid and lovely and incredibly sweaty. I felt proud to be there with my mates, drinking, dancing, sweating, faces and bodies moving towards and away from you, like on a swinging galleon at a theme park. Now they're close, now they're over there. I didn't care if someone bashed into me, spilt pints on me, I was wet already. So what? That shared elation at each new tune, that wildness. It was like we could dance away all that shit on the outside. No one telling you what to do, no rules to be adhered to, just damp strangers dancing. <laughs> Later, when I woke up and saw the greasy mark my head had left on the night bus window, I wondered how my hair had got so dirty, but I didn't worry about that then. I think about that place a lot. I can't imagine it empty. I mean, obviously, I've been in there when it was empty, but then there was the buzz of what was coming or had just happened. Thinking about it neglected makes me sad. I want to break in wrap myself in that washed out flag, kiss that neglected sticky floor. Well, maybe not kiss it, but give it a stroke, you know? It was a Monday night, Monday, and we didn't care. I'd already planned to call in sick the next day. Well, I told you, I remember saying how that dull, itchy little office never made me feel so like me as this ramshackle disco. And you laughed and you said I was funny, and that's when you touched my face. I only played the quiz machine because I saw you leaning on it, in your denim with a fresh pint. 
maybe looking towards me? And that's when we first talked. You helped me. Because you knew about the Olympics and dinosaurs and bees and the Bronte sisters and the Blarney Stone. And I knew, well, nothing on that quiz machine we discovered. I said I was embarrassed. I was so old, yet so brain dead. And you said you were embarrassed, you were old, but lived with your mum. But you're not old. And rent here is stupid. And I think maybe your mum needs you, so as if I'd judge that. I did touch your arm more than was necessary, but then you touched my face. And that made me go all hot, like I'd just done poppers. I hadn't. Well, not yet. I was aware I was speaking in that accentuated South London accent I use when I'm intimidated or shy, and I'm never normally shy in there. But you... We lost the quiz machine, because neither of us know the periodic table. <laughs> so that's something we have in common. And I said, so you're not totally perfect then? And you said, far from it. And I said, glad to hear it. But the thing is, I think you might be perfect. Or perfect for me, at least. Because, yeah, maybe we were drunk on a Monday. But I got this feeling you're a good person. And no, that isn't just because of the aura from the open toilet door. We both went to find our friends, and that was cool, but really, I wanted to stay with you. Later, I snuck out to the all-night garage, stood by the fridges, listened to the humming, and let the frosty air cool my steaming head. And it was like I was on this secret mission to sober up enough to talk to you again. I got a Coke, a chocolate milkshake, and this enormous cheese and onion pasty for the carbs, and I hid round the back of the garage by the air pumps to consume it. I saw my mates stagger off down the road, and I let them go. It was a Monday, after all. And then you walked right past me into the garage. I finished my food and waited, and when you came out, you had another of those enormous pasties. <laughs> what are the chances? Both hate the periodic table, both love pasties. I watched you cross the road and hand it to the street drinker who looked proper thrilled, and for a second, I saw that gold aura round you again. But it could just have been your lighter flame as you sparked a fag. And then you saw me and smiled, so I came over and you asked if I was having a good night, but I didn't say much because I had a dry mouth from the pasty, despite the coke and the milkshake. And then you asked, do you want to kiss me? And I said, I taste of pasty. And you laughed at me again. And we showed our stamps to the door staff, yours on your wrist, because you're cool, and we went back inside. And that is where we kissed. There, on the periphery of the dance floor, you and me, and your smoke breath, and my pasty breath, and I saw you properly. Your wonky teeth, and the neon light bringing out the freckles on your forehead, and I wanted to hold on to that moment. So I did something I'd never normally do, and I took out my phone to take our photo. I asked if it was stupid, and you laughed and said, it's not stupid, you'd like one too, but your phone's got no battery. And then you smiled, showing those perfect wonky teeth. When we looked at the photo, I was so grubby with glitter and these dark smudges on my head from God knows where, and you said I looked like an urchin? And I said, a really old urchin. And you laughed, and then we kissed again. And then we hugged for like a really long time. 
It felt so nice holding you close to me in public. Us alone, together, surrounded. And I stopped using that exaggerated accent. Did you notice? I didn't feel shy anymore. I felt safe. So thank you. And sorry I wasn't better at the quiz machine. And sorry. I'm really sorry I didn't invite you back to mine. I wanted to, but I just didn't want us to be another one of those things. And you said you needed to get back for your mum, so I don't think it would have been possible anyway. And sorry I woke up on the night bus after I left you without a phone and so lost your number. It's just when you're one million years old and you've been working all day and then getting drunk on a Monday, sometimes you get very, very tired. I'm even sorrier our photo's gone. But I can still see it in my head. I had planned to go back the next week, but then all this. And I kept thinking there'd be another chance that soon I'd go back and you'd be there in your denim with a pint and I could explain, but... Well, there hasn't been. I keep thinking about your mum. Whether she's okay, I'm sure she's fine, but... You did say you needed to get back to her and... Well, it's hard not to think when you've not got much else to do. I thought maybe you'd pop by my office. I, I told you where it was, do you remember? I went in the next day. The glitter came off surprisingly easily. I actually didn't take a sick day that whole week, but after that, we stopped going in. This is my office now. <sighs> my office. My bedroom. My nightclub. So, if by any tiny chance you somehow see this, please accept my apology and know how much that night meant to me. I really would like to retake that photo of us one day if we got the chance. And maybe we could even go for lunch. I know this garage that does a great cheese and onion pasty. <laughs> okay.